We are on the beach again, and I guess you know what that means by now. Yes, there is a new camera. We've been hearing about this camera for a while now. It is Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II X, which is an upgraded version of Lumix S5 Mark II, which we all loved and we cannot stop talking about it ever since we were in Tokyo, Japan. So what makes Lumix S5 Mark II X $200 more expensive than Lumix S5 Mark II. Let's talk about it. And here it is, Lumix S5 Mark II X comes in this nicely designed box. And just like the fantastic Lumix S5 Mark II, it has 24.2 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor, it can record videos up to 6K 30 frames per second in 4 to 0 10 bit in 3 by 2 aspect ratio. It has a 3.68 million dot OLED electronic viewfinder, a 3 inch flip out LCD screen with touch support, 779 phase detection autofocus system, 5 axis sensor shift image stabilization, dual ISO, dual UHS 2 SD card slots, full size HDMI port, USB C port that supports power delivery, microphone in, headphone out, and more. In case you haven't seen it, watch my S5 Mark II review where I covered the similar things these both cameras have in much more depth. Of course, we don't need crazy intros, crazy beauty shots for Lubix S5 Mark II X because it's basically the same thing. It is the same body as Lubix S5 Mark II. It is just blacked out, which makes it look gorgeous. So. I think we can just jump to the point and since I'm shooting everything you see here with Lumix S5 Mark II X, you can see how nicely it performs. By the way, some of those updates that Lumix S5 Mark II X has is also coming to Lumix S5 Mark II as a firmware update that you can purchase. So let's start talking about those and then we will talk about the features this camera has that is specific to this one. The firmware update for Lumix S5 Mark II is coming out on June 13, 2013, which is 10 years ago. <laughs> the firmware update for Lumix S5 Mark II is coming out on June 13, 2023, and it's gonna cost 199 US dollars. Lumix S5 Mark II and Lumix S5 Mark II X supports black magic and ProRes RAW output to an external recorder. Using these cameras, you can record up to 12-bit 5.9K full frame, 30 frames per second video. There's also another feature coming to both of these cameras and that is called Live View Composite. And what that does is, for example, let's say you wanna shoot stars and you wanna create star trails. It takes a photo and on that first photo, it concentrates on the dark sides of the image or dark sides of the composition you have, let's say the trees and then all the other stuff other than stars. And then the next time you hit the shutter button again, this time it concentrates on the bright things in your scene, let's say stars, and then it shows you the progress as it's taking photo. Let's say there are photos being taken with two uh, second increments, it puts all those together and then you start seeing them appearing on the monitor or on the LCD screen that you're looking at and it creates one photo so you don't need to edit or anything right out of the camera. You end up with start trails and you can choose whenever to stop as well, which is great, a nice feature. But here's where it gets interesting. Lumix S5 Mark II X can record internally 
ProRes HQ up to full HD 60 frames per second and also it can record all intra in cinema 4k 60 frames per second well did you realize something did you realize the dimmed out options well that's because this camera supports external SSD connection what that means is you can grab one of the approved external SSDs and you can connect it to its USB-C and start recording onto that directly which saves you time there is no transferring uh, the footage from your memory card to your computer it's already on the external drive which probably has faster uh, read and write speeds which saves you money for example a memory card can cost this much but an external drive this big can cost this much and also it saves you heat because there's no extra overheat happening in the camera while recording to a memory card because it's recording to an external drive so what that means is when you connect your USB SSD into this machine you can start recording at higher frame rates for example when it comes to ProRes you can start recording at ProRes HQ 5.8K 30 frames per second video or cinema 4k 60 frames per second in all intra up to 800 megabits per second in APS-C mode in case you don't know what all intra or ProRes RAW or Blackmagic RAW means let me explain it to you let me refresh your memory if you cannot remember it clearly normally on these cameras these kind of cameras we have the compression that is called uh, LGOP which stands for long group of photos what that means is as you can see the stuff that is not moving behind me the camera takes all of that and compresses them together in all the frames that things that are not moving which saves a lot of space and it is a good compression all intra takes every frame in a video and compresses it within itself so there's much more data and then Apple ProRes is a compression the HQ or the regular Apple ProRes is a compression that is a lot less compressed so there's much more information now when you go to RAW there is no compression which means you can edit that as hard as the information in that footage allows you to also it is easier on your computer for it to play back while you're editing the video because you can think of compression like folding a piece of paper that when there's more compression the paper is folded more but to see what's inside the paper the computer has to unfold it more as well Lumix S5 Mark II X has another feature that I actually really like which is live streaming and not just any regular kind of live streaming what you can do is you can connect this camera to your Wi-Fi and then put in your uh, live stream information there and then start live streaming just like that just by hitting the record button you start live streaming it is a really sweet feature but you gotta remember if you have live streaming on you know watch out don't accidentally hit record and get cancelled so the difference between these two cameras is basically this but I actually discovered something else one of the favorite things I have on this camera is the open gate recording option which is what, how I've been recording this entire video it is shot in 4x3 and I can decide on the framing afterwards I can crop it this way for vertical videos or go to share it on YouTube it's it's a fantastic feature but one thing S2 didn't have when you connect an external monitor while recording in 6k open gate it was cancelling the eye detection autofocus which is something you don't want for example if you're wearing a hat it would focus on the lid not in your eye however this camera doesn't turn off the eye autofocus and maybe that's something that's going to come with 
the firmware update. I don't know, but this camera can do it. When it comes to overheating, as just like the previous camera, there's no overheating on this camera because it has a really nice cooling system. And I recorded ProRes HQ to an external drive, 5.8K, 30 frames per second for 35 minutes. And there wasn't even a sign of the overheating sign. And um, it, yeah, it recorded for 35 minutes and then we almost finished the battery, but we ran out of two terabytes on my external drive. So yeah, those are huge files, but no overheating at all. So it delivers what it promises. These cameras also have features that are fantastic, like shutter angle, variable shutter, waveform, and, and more. There's almost a setting for everything you need on this camera, but there's also one thing that I realized after I reviewed my uh, S5 Mark II, and that is the Ronin compatibility. So if you have a Ronin gimbal, you can put this camera on top of that Ronin gimbal and start using it. And the dial on the Ronin gimbal can control anything you want on the camera. You can set it to aperture, you can set it to zoom, you can set it to whatever you want. But that's not where it stops. This camera sends the tracking information to Ronin, which means with the pull of a trigger using the Ronin without needing a Raven eye or anything else, you can make Ronin follow you, track you. It's a fantastic feature that this camera has, which means you can even get the Ronin 3 Mini that doesn't support Raven Eye and put this on it and start tracking with it. Of course, Raven Eye has its own advantages. It is much more capable and then there are a lot of settings. And if you have a lens that is narrower with the tracking using this camera, sometimes it gets shaky. It cannot track properly, but with 18 millimeter, 24 millimeter, whatever, or if you're a little further away, it works great. I love it. Well, let's talk about the things I don't like, which is going to be a very short list. And interestingly, as much as I love the blacked out design of this camera, sometimes it is hard to read what is on that dial, especially in lower light situations. You cannot fully read what it says on the dial. Autofocus still loses you when you close one of your eyes. And of course the resolution and frame rate games. Some frame rates or compression types only work with APS-C and some don't, which you learn pretty quickly, but I hoped such capable camera didn't have this kind of limitations. And finally, as incredible as autofocus on this camera is, it still sometimes loses you and I hope it gets perfected with a firmware update. By the way, remember that game I played with GH5 called Let's Guess What's in Focus? Well, we played it again and it was perfection. All right, remember long time ago, we played a game, guess where the focus is? Yeah, it was a while ago. It was some time ago. Well, now, if we play the same game, I can actually see where the focus is and it's right in my eye. And then you oh. have a square around your head. Square for a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so hold on, hold on. If I tap on you. So now the focus is on you. Look at that. Now it's on me. Today we're reviewing this camera. It's Panasonic. It's Panasonic. S5. Today we're reviewing this Panasonic S5. Mark II. Today we're reviewing this Panasonic S5 Mark II. X. Oh my god. Today we're reviewing this Panasonic S5 Mark II X. That good job, yeah. <laughs> I struggle to say that name <laughs> so, so in Venice Beach early in the morning. But yeah, now we can see. Everything. Look, great focus. Fantastic. Okay, in conclusion, X marks the spot. For me, X is much better than S5 Mark II. I mean, you can get the firmware update, but still, 
the flexibility you get with this camera is fantastic. To me, the tipping point was while recording in 6K when you connect an external monitor, the eye of the focus keeps on working. To me, that's, that's why I would pick this camera over the other one and it's totally worth $200 extra in my opinion because it's not worth the hassle. But maybe that eye autofocus update will come to the other camera with the firmware update. I don't know. We have to wait and see. Well, thank you very much for watching this short but sweet episode and I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think about Lumix S5 Mark II X in the comment section below. Is this a camera you're interested in? Is this a camera you waited for? Or do you have Lumix S5 Mark II and then now you wanna switch to uh, X or are you happy with what you have? What do you use these cameras for? Let me know in the comment section below. It's always really nice and fun to read what you guys do. And until I see you next time, take really good care of yourselves and hoş çakalın. I wasn't able to go to the regular place to start the video because there's someone sleeping on it. <laughs>